This is the John McAllister Report. I'm John McAllister. And today, something a little different, something a little different. I spent about 10 minutes talking with Doug Phillips, head football coach at Youngstown State University. Doug's been a friend of mine for a long time. I was able to get him during his lunch break because I really wanted to talk about the most recent victory, Southern Illinois. And uh, they did a great job. They, Southern Illinois was ranked, I think, fifth in the, they came in after losing 44-41 two weeks ago. Last week, they beat Southern Illinois and uh, gave up three points. So they really were focused. YSU players were focused, great practices, and they did a good job. So I wanted to spend a couple minutes with Doug today just talking about that game and YSU in general. So please sit back and enjoy my video podcast with Doug Phillips, head football coach at Youngstown State University. Coach Phillips, I am so excited about you winning last weekend, beating a team that was ranked in the top five, and I just wanted to spend some time. I don't usually do this, but I wanted to spend some time talking to you about YSU, Youngstown State University. It just keeps adding more things on their campus every time I go there every year. So tell me about the game. Let's tell me about the game with Southern Illinois, Doug. Well, I'll tell you what, and it all started coming off uh, a tough road loss at Northern Iowa. And, you know, in our league, man, every week you got to be ready. And, you know, people ask, I remember doing my radio TV show, you know, and they say, you still mad about Saturday? And I'm like, if you don't put games to bed on Sunday, you're just going to, it's going to linger into the next game, win or lose. You know, so for us, you know, we had to bounce back. An important game. You know, you don't want to go 0-2 to start league play. We did that last year and had to battle back and got to the end of the year. So we knew, you know, someone said pressure. There's pressure every day, every week. In these <laughs> games. And we try to teach pressure. It, that pressure is a privilege, John. I, and, you, yeah. you know, pressure comes because we, we care about you and we have very high expectations. So, you know, we, we, we went into the game and, you know, put a plan together. It was first time, you know, we really – they had the number one rushing defense in the league at giving up 58 yards. But we knew we had to establish a run game. And we were able to do that in the first half, which I think carried over. Defensively, we knew we they had a quarterback that needed 122 yards to break an offense school record. And we held them the total offense of 100 yards in, in the game. So we knew we had to affect the quarterback. So really the game, I believe, was one in the trenches, the offensive line being able to establish a running game. And our defensive line, I think, had seven sacks in the game and was able to stop their running game. So that, that's usually where the games are won. I totally agree. And tell me about the running game again. I think – you, we just talked off the air about that. I think a running game is so huge. It, it is. I mean, it, it, everything it, else go, yeah. I think. Yeah, it, it defines who you are. Right. And, you know, coming off, you know, we went to Northern Iowa and the game kind of turned into a shootout, 44-41. And we threw for like 365 yards, which we got great receivers. We got a quarterback that throws the high efficiency, you know, probably over 75% in the last three games. You know, but really that, that, that running game defines who you are as a program, defines who you are as a football team. And two things, running the football and stopping the run. And, and that's who Youngstown State is. And when Youngstown State's good, they can run the football and they can stop the run. And, you know, it goes back to the grit and to the hard work and to the community that we represent. Right. And I think last thing on 
the running attack and being a high school coach only. I think it's so much, I, I hate to use the word soft. There's got to be a different word for it. But if you pass all the time and, and don't have a running game, I, I think that affects your linemen to some extent because there's nothing better than a lineman driving somebody off the ball and five yards downfield and getting up and just smiling. I mean, I think that I'm yeah. a high school. I mean, I was a lineman as well, but that's the thing I think so huge. No, I, and I, I agree with you. And it all starts in practice and, you know, those guys going against each other and the inside run periods and, you know, developmental program. And, and I say that because our first half of practice, we're going to, our, our threes are getting repetitions running our offense in the inside run and maybe in the RPO game, because we know that those guys got to develop and just making them scout teamers and where they're not repping, you know, they're not going to be ready for you one day. So our first half of our practice, there's a focus in those young guys and getting them developed. And it is stopping the run and running the football. Well, hopefully those young guys want to come to practice if they know they're going to be involved. I'm, I'm sure uh, not everybody, but I mean, I think it's more you can get those, the younger kids involved, the better it is as well. And uh, let's go back to one other thing. I think you talked about pressure and, and I think that's, that's how you survive. Though. I think pressure makes you better. Well, or you can go the other way, but I think, for most kids, it, most people, pressure makes you better, perform better. And that's putting them under the gun like that. And you guys are surely, you know, have, have pressure on you. Now, let me ask you a, <laughs> kind of a silly question here. How do you go from score or from giving up 44 points <laughs> to giving up three points against a really good teams? <laughs> Well, I always say this to our coaches. It's never the player's fault. You know, I learned that from Coach Dressen. So if we gave up 44 points, we got to look ourselves in the mirror and see what we needed to do better. And, you know, we came off that game knowing that, you know, we needed to, you know, realign, get all the arrows pointing in the same direction. You know, we had to pay attention to the details and the communications that were being made at a high level, fast speed during a game and really analyze and say, you know, it's not what we know, it's what our kids know. And how can we get our kids to play faster? And so for us, it's evaluating and assessing that and then putting a plan together that, you know, we're fixing the things that we did. And sometimes, you know, when you don't pay attention to detail or are focus for 60 minutes, but you win, Sometimes you don't really learn a lesson because you won and you had success. Right. When you get bit like we did and you lose a game on the road, a game that you believe you should have won because of that focus and, and maybe the lack of attention, you know, sometimes that stings a little harder. So you have the attention now because guess what, guys? You know, that is the game we let slip and we got to focus on us. And if we can focus on what we can control, and fix our things. I never worry about our opponent. It's what we do. Exactly. Exactly. I to totally agree. Now, who do you have this week? We go to South Dakota, who, you know, is four and one. They beat North Dakota State in the Fargo Dome a couple of weeks ago. They got the number one rushing uh, scoring defense in our uh, league. And they're a bend but don't break. And then offensively, they like to you know, they'll be 50-50, but they really like to establish the run game. I think their tailback just came off a, a game against Murray State where he had over 197 yards rushing. That's really good. South mm -hmm. Dakota. They have, you said, I think they have the dome, right? The they do. And, yep. And we've never been there. So this will be our first trip going to South Dakota. That's really good. And yeah, I know you're really, really busy and I'm yeah. catching you over lunch. Tell yeah. me about the rest. Who's down the road then? You have that well, in front of you. Yeah. You know, what you learn in this league and the rest of the way every week, if you don't get focused on the game that you have and put right. you know, the preparation into that Saturday, any team in our league, last year, you know, we played on the road and went to Western Illinois and it took us, 
it took us all 59 minutes and about, you know, 40 seconds to finally take the lead in that game. You know, and they, they were over it during the year. So in our league, the level of competition is so equal. And it's those road, you go on the road in this league, you, you better be focused. You better be ready to play football. So the rest of the year, a lot of our teams are ranked in the top 25 in FCS. I, I tell everybody all the time, we're like the SEC, you know, of FBS football. So, you know, you, you got Illinois State ranked. You got South Dakota State ranked. You got North Dakota. You got South Dakota. You got Northern Iowa. You know, even the Penguins, I think, are in, in the rankings this week. You got Southern Illinois. So you, you're going to play the very best week in and week out. And at the end of the day, everyone's trying to get that seven to eight wins that'll, you know, extend your season into the playoffs. It's really good. I two more questions. And tell me about the Missouri Valley real quick. I, I, I do that because I'm sure a lot of people don't understand what the Missouri Valley Conference is all about. So, well, yeah. Yeah, I tell you what, it's just physical, tough, hard-nosed, disciplined football. And if you watch Sunday, you know, I watched last night Dallas Cowboys and Hunter Lupke, their fullback from North Dakota State's playing. Jaleel McLaughlin scored another touchdown, our tailback from last year for the Denver yeah. Broncos on Sunday. Two weeks ago, we had two Penguins score, Drew Ogletree for the Indianapolis Colts and Jaleel. So when you turn on the field, and there's NFL players in this league every year, they're getting drafted in the first, second, third rounds. You know, so great football players. And this league develops them. You know, they come to their program. Four years later, they're getting drafted by the NFL. So just a lot of respect. Great coaches. You got coaches that have been coaching in this league for 23 <laughs> years. You know, Mark Farley at, at Northern Iowa. So, you know, Bob Nielsen at South Dakota. I think this is his ninth season at South Dakota. So the consistency of those programs is remarkable. It's really good. Last question. We're, next home game is when? Uh, homecoming. Homecoming. I look at my thing. I don't look too far ahead beyond South Dakota, but I, I see homecoming okay. uh, versus Illinois State. The reason I said that is because – Let's sell YSU game day then. Yeah. Inviting kids to come to – how does that work? To come it to is. Game? You know, we have a list usually from our camps or, you know, from us going out. And, you know, we'll send our invites and, you know, try to get as many uh, players to come up and check out the atmosphere that we have at Youngstown State. You know, recruiting's a you know, the 300-mile the radius of Youngstown, Ohio. That's the, the – you know, the, what we live off of, that's what our roster is made up of. So, you know, we'd love to see everyone come to a football game. Well, Coach, you're so – I did a little homework, and you do. You have kids from Cleveland, from Toledo, from Clare over in Cincinnati, I think maybe even Winton Wood or one of those places. I mean, oh, yeah. That, that's way over on the other side of the state now. But you have them coming, and then you do a great job locally. You know, you got that – radius right you know that area so well doug i really appreciate you taking this 10 minutes or 11 minutes and just talking about the big victory and then just remind people who ysu is and what it's all about so we've done that thank you very much for being on today go gwens go gwens <laughs>